Hello everyone and welcome to EduSurge Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today I am going to discuss a very interesting surgical technique and this video is followed by another video where you can see an actual surgical procedure demonstrating the technique that I am going to discuss today. So this video is on biliary enteric anastomosis and we are going to see the anatomical basis of how to perform this anastomosis and I will discuss the steps of how we perform this anastomosis in this video. So like I said, I am going to discuss a very particular hepaticojejunostomy technique and that is the diamond shaped hepaticojejunostomy as my mentor Dr. Prasad Vagle calls it. The key to this technique is the specific suturing that is involved and that is what I am going to discuss in today's video. Steps to make the diamond are going to be demonstrated in a very simplified line diagram. And then if you are interested, a surgery video is also being uploaded. I will put a link to that video in the description below. And you can see the surgery video and revise the technique that is discussed in this video. So just a brief on biliary enteric anastomosis as the words make out, there are two ends. There is a biliary end and there is an enteric or an intestinal end. On the biliary side, most common structures are extrahepatic or intrahepatic bile ducts and rarely, but more of historical importance is the biliary end being a gallbladder, what is known as a cholecystoenteric anastomosis, not utilely performed in today's world. So most common biliary end are extrahepatic or intrahepatic bile ducts. Enteric end is duodenum or jejunum. So based on this two ends, it can be known as a coledoco duodenostomy when it involves the bile duct and the duodenum. It can be known as hepatico jejunostomy when it involves the common hepatic duct or intrahepatic duct and the jejunum. When we talk of configuration, the left end of this end to side denotes the biliary end because it's biliary enteric anastomosis and the right hand side denotes the enteric configuration. So the configuration can be end to side that is the end of bile duct or hepatic duct to the side of the root loop of the jejunum or duodenum and side to side which means that it is anastomosis to one side of the bile duct with one side of the bowel. The diamond shape technique that we are going to discuss and I'm going to show the steps of this technique is a side to side configuration. Again, the anastomosis can be stented, which can be a PTBD which is pulled across or a stent or it can be without stent. In my institute, usually we are doing non-stented anastomosis. And Hepatico jejunostomy or cholecysto duodenostomy or coleduco duodenostomy, all of these are most commonly single layer. Not many institutes perform a double layer anastomosis in this area. So essentially all biliary enteric anastomosis are single layer anastomosis. The suturing can be continuous sutures or interrupted sutures. Now coming to some of the principles of performing a safe biliary enteric anastomosis, the most important principle that you need to understand is that of the blood supply of the common bile duct and the common hepatic duct. As you are all aware and as I'm going to discuss in a separate video on blood supply to gallbladder and bile duct, but just for summarizing the key points in this video, the bile duct is supplied by a 3 o'clock and a 9 o'clock marginal artery and the hilum is supplied by the transverse hilar marginal artery. It is the anastomosis between these vessels that lead to formation of an epicoledocal plexus and it is this plexus which usually supplies the hilar component as well as the collateral supply to the marginal component. So what you have to understand is that you should never divide the bile duct in its middle because this is the area where the bile duct is least vascular and whenever you are doing an anastomosis close to the hilum, it is very important to not dissect superiorly to the hilum 
to preserve the hilar marginal artery so this is the anatomical relevance of blood supply of the common bile duct and the common hepatic duct so some key pearls that i have gathered and learned from my mentors for a safe hepatic jejunostomy include the anastomosis should be wide as wide as possible as they say inside the or and when you do an end to side like i said it should be never at the mid common bile duct level a hepatic duct anastomosis is less prone to stricture than a bile duct anastomosis easiest technique is to divide above the cystic duct junction that is why i said that a hepatic duct anastomosis is better than a bile duct anastomosis tension free limb of jejunum and duodenum which easily reaches the duct should be selected the basis of forming the diamond is that you take a longitudinal incision and a transverse closure we will see this in the next slide minimum possible of dissection is to be duct superior to the anastomosis level and this is to preserve the vascularity so now coming to the technique that i have learned and that we are going to discuss in this video a very simple thing to understand is that if both the ends the biliary end the entric end are open like these ellipses then the anastomosis is also going to be of the same shape right but if one of the cuts is longitudinal and the other is horizontal then a specific suturing technique can be used to roughly create a diamond the aim of creating this diamond is that it gives a wide anastomosis and there are less chances of stricture now how do this longitudinal and horizontal cuts form a diamond a very simplified diagram here shows that suppose the bile duct is cut longitudinally mind you we are discussing a side to side biliary entric anastomosis so the bile duct has a longitudinal cut and the intestine has a horizontal cut then if we take sutures like one corner of the duct to mid middle of the opening of the intestine corner of the intestine to middle of opening of the duct again corner of intestine to middle of opening of the duct and corner of the bile duct and to middle of the intestine now when we tie these stitches when we tie these stitches what will happen it will cause widening of these openings right it will cause widening of this opening and finally when you tie it completely the tension or the widening of the stitches due to the knots will produce a very wide anastomosis resembling the shape of a diamond explaining this in very detail in case of a hepatic or jejunostomy and like i said i have put a video demonstrating this technique using this same line diagram so that you can understand it better the link to that video is in the description below so before seeing the surgical video and the case that we perform using this technique let us understand how the stitches are taken to create a diamond shape hepatic or jejunostomy So as you can see on your screen, the green is the hepatic duct, and this is the level of the hilum, the right duct and the left duct, and this is the level of the hilum. And the pink demonstrates the intestinal rule. So, like I discussed, the cut on the hepatic duct is longitudinal. and the bowel is oriented in a way that the cut on the bowel as shown by the black line becomes at a 90 degree angle to the cut on the hepatic duct so you can see that the long axis of the two cuts are perpendicular to each other right the horizontal axis of the bile duct cut is perpendicular to the horizontal axis of the intestinal cut due to this orientation so before going into details of the stitches we have to understand that the cut that we take or the incision that we take on the hepatic duct has to be divided into anterior layer and posterior layer so here you can see that the anterior layer of hepatic duct has to be sutured to the anterior layer of the intestine 
and posterior layer of the hepatic duct has to be sutured to the posterior layer of the intestine. Now you may imagine that the two are reversed in position. Well, this is not a mistake in the diagram. I am going to show how this reverse orientation helps you in creating the diamond shaped hepatic or jejunal stone. The layers are usually named with respect to the enteric orientation after the anastomosis, as you will see. So now going to the stitches, the first stitch usually taken is the apical stitch as shown by the black dot. Then we take the two mid mild duct incision stitches which are shown by the blue and the red dot. Then we take stitches on the anterior layer of the hepatic duct and all these stitches are then reflected above so that the opening of the hepatic duct becomes wide due to tension on the stitches given by the assistant surgeon. After you have taken all the anterior layer stitches on the hepatic duct, you open the incision on the intestine and now start taking stitches on the intestine. It is very important to remember that on the intestine, the first layer that we take is the posterior layer. So what we do is we take the two corner stitches. Now this is very important to understand that the red stitch which is at the middle of the hepatic duct incision goes to the corner of the bowel incision. Right? Like we saw in the diamond creation video. The middle stitch on the wild duct incision goes to the corner stitch on the bowel incision. Similarly, the left-hand middle stitch on the hepatic duct incision goes to the left-hand corner of the bowel. Now we will take the posterior layer. So usually what we do is we take a center stitch first on the posterior layer on both sides. Remember that the anterior stitches have been reflected above to create a wide hepatic duct area which helps in the suturing. So this is the first center stitch that we take. You can see that the corner stitch on the hepatic duct falls on the center of the incision on the intestine. Then we take the other stitches. Again, remember that the right hand stitches go on the right hand side, right? So the right hand stitches go on the right hand side and the left hand stitches go on the left hand side. So now when you tie this layer, this purple and purple approximate, this green and green approximate, and the yellow and yellow approximate. The red approximates with red and the blue approximate with blue. What this causes is the length of this incision provides the widening of this area, right? When you tie because this is a wide area and this is a narrow area. So the length of this incision on the intestine provides widening of the incision on the hepatic duct and that is the principle that creates the diamond. So once you have tied all the posterior layer stitches, then we start taking the anterior layer. So the corner of the hepatic duct goes to the middle of the incision on the intestine just like we did it before. The right hand stitches go to the right hand side of the anterior layer and the left hand stitches or the pink stitches go on the left hand side of the anterior layer. Right? So now when you will tie all these layers you will see that the intestine rotates on the hepatic duct because this layer is the posterior and this layer is the anterior. So this black is tied to black, blue is tied to blue, blue is tied to blue and that is how the diamond is created. So now to understand how the diamond is created, we know that these four are the corner stitches on the hepatic duct, the black, the blue, the purple and the red, right? But if you see on the intestine, the black is going to come here after the stitch, right? So that is how the anterior layer is above, the posterior layer is below, 
but the intestine is rotated with the anastomosis so that with the orientation after the anastomosis both the anterior layers are in one direction and both the posterior layers are in another direction so the two pink stitches the two pink stitches are going to be above and the two blue stitches are going to be above and the two yellow and two green are going to be in the posterior layer so this is how the diamond shaped hepatico jejuno stone is created like i said if you want to watch the surgical demonstration of this technique the link to that is given in the description below this technique is again described in that video so that you can revise it and then see the surgical video where this line diagram is used to explain the anatomy Thank you.